check. Am I on? S says I'm on. I swear, this stuff is so complicated. Hello, check. Am I on? Okay, it looks like I'm on. Now we're going to start all over again. Oh my word. Uh, where did it go? Uh, okay, well that's that was uh, inconvenient. Um, so if you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, here we go again. Oh my word. Okay, let's try this again. Another excuse to play Tetris. So welcome to my second video of. Uh, trying to make a Tetris data extractor. This is your first time joining me. I'll show you what we're in for. Okay, so this is Tetris and we'll do a level 15 start here. So I've been practicing this game. I'm gonna turn down my volume. Uh, so I've been uh, playing this game and I want to get better and I want to store the data of you know my personal bests whoops uh, that's not good and so when this game is over there's a Tetris it actually gives you some statistics that I want to save and actually this is not that bad of a level so I should probably start making mistakes on purpose. Okay, you get the idea. So we play a game and we're done. Take a screenshot. Now, I want to extract out all this information and if you joined me last time, Um, if you joined me last time, we tried to use a Tesseract library, which I thought was going to be easy and open, it was open source. I thought I'd just throw everything into the library, let it figure out, you know, my score and the number of pieces I got and the level I reached and the number of lines and, and all that. Uh, I thought it was going to be easy, but it wasn't and it didn't work. And you can see that fail my failure on uh, the previous, the previous uh, video, but I think today I'm going to um, sort of take a step back and let's let's be honest using the Tesseract library was probably overkill um, it didn't even work on their own sample data so I don't want to use it anymore but when I think about the issue that I'm trying to solve all I have to do is recognize the digits 0 through 9 um, in this font and so that's what we're gonna do we're going to instead of try and use someone else's libraries let's just create something that can recognize Tetris digits and then we can build on that to extract data from everything else so uh, staring at the screen I see a few things um, It seems like every now can I I can't bring my mouse over it you know what? let's just uh, let's actually take a look at this here here's the screenshot here's the screenshot of the screen that whoops. <laughs> uh, that I want to extract data from so you probably notice so here's a zero you know there's a one there's a two do i have a three there's a three four five six seven eight nine i have all the digits on this screen 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract these things and we'll come up with a way to recognize which digit this is because the problem that we face is these are this is an image right now and an image is very different than text. Text in a computer program is backed by ASCII characters which have an ASCII code associated with them. Pictures are just backed by pixel data and so we have to take the pixels and turn it into text um, but we only have to do 0 through 9 in this font so yeah I think we're gonna be okay um, here's my idea we're gonna have to do some experimentation hopefully we'll, we'll get we'll make some progress today but the first thing we're going to try and do is be able to given a a digit let's see if we can reliably extract that digit so my thought let's go back into the screenshots here and I think we're going to open this up in good old uh, good old paint Microsoft paint because this is going to allow us to see the coordinate system um, and there's no blurring effect here okay so what are we gonna do uh, I went online and the horizontal well, the resolution of a Nintendo screen is 256 by 240 okay that's fantastic 256 by 240 there's it looks to me like this is these text each character takes the same width so this is this is like a a fixed width font which is going to make things really easy for us we should be able to take a square around the character and we know that that size of box will contain only one character no matter what the character is because you know some fonts aren't fixed width so L's take a lot less horizontal width than a W for instance but this is not the case here the question is how can we reliably get this box whoops so if I go to my Good, now I can select uh, rectangular pieces. Whoa. Okay, what I'm gonna do is select all of this stuff. This is one, two, three, four, five, six characters. And my selection is 269 pixels wide. Now, 269 pixels is not divisible by 6. So, one second. I have to get an actual box. Um, the actual real box, because I have this idea in my head. And it's important I get the actual character box. So, 269 divided by 6 is uh, one pixel off of a true multiple of 6 which is 270. 270 divided by 6 is 45. So I am going to assume that each character takes 45 pixels in width and my height uh, my height is 42. Now I am going to use these two characters because these look like on you know lines right next to each other um, I wish I had three but here's my thought actually let's do this let's take the E let's copy it I'm gonna uh, what if I take this E and copy it paste it here it is 
See, it looks like I can fit an E right there. So uh, the game of Tetris isn't doing something, you know, terribly difficult. Um, these old systems, it seems like these aren't graphics characters at all. Like, they're... <sighs> I question whether these are actual graphics um, compared to hardware characters, which you can create hardware characters from any sort of, you know, any sort of shape. It doesn't have to be a digit or a number. But that's what a lot of these old systems did is they created these hardware characters, which they would be associated with an ASCII character. Um, and it would just be displayed on the screen and you could build fancy shapes from them. Anyway, that all being said, I think we just have a missing line here. But look at what I've done here. I've made a column of five things. So now I'm going to select all of this. And now I have five rows. And it's 196 pixels. So uh, 196 is close to 195, which is the closest multiple of four. So 195 divided by five rows, um, that's going to give me a vertical distance of 39, right? So my thought is that my character block is going to be 45 by 39. One second, I need a pen. So 45 by 39. That's going to be my block. Okay, awesome. Now that I've done that, um, there's, whoa, okay, I want to make a, you know, I should really have GIMP installed, but I don't, uh, 45 by 39, and this is going to be important, there we go. <laughs> There's my 45 by 39 block. Now it's important I get the exact one right because uh, let's just copy this. We'll make a new file. Uh, yeah, don't save. Let's bring this all the way down and paste this. What just happened? File. Paste. There we go. There's my two. And I think that's actually the best looking two. So I'm going to save this as a BMP um, just so I don't lose any data. Because I want to be able to analyze these things. So here's my thought before I, before I go any further. My thought is if I can correctly analyze each digit and count the black pixels versus the non-black pixels, is there a specific footprint? So can I just count the black pixels, determine that, you know, 37% black pixels only occurs in the digit 2? And if all other digits have a different percentage of black pixels, then maybe all I need to do is check percentages of black pixels in 45 by 39 blocks. And we should be able to um, differentiate between digits without actually looking at, you know, the curvature of the digit and all that, because that's that gets complicated. So. Uh, the more I think about this, though, I'm wondering if, uh, it's 
probably a 45 by 40. I'm going to convert that to 40 on the vertical height. That's a redundant phrase, vertical height. Um, and this is just for my specific image. Um, the Nintendo resolution was 200, and, what did I say, 56 by 200? Um, but my actual image is, what is my actual image? What is the pixel dimensions of my actual image? A 1411 by 1080. Yeesh, that's kind of weird. Okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're gonna work with percentages. Anyway, I'm gonna save this in my, my folder here. I have Tetris Data Extractor and I'm going to make a new folder here called Digits. And we are gonna save it. This will be called 2.bmp. Okay, uh, now comes the kind of boring point where I, uh, let's, no, let's, let's not go through all the digits because that's going to be boring. Let's actually see if we can read the data from this two image. So we're going to open up our project that I started last time and thoroughly failed with. We'll just kill it all. Uh, this is all that test data stuff. We're going to delete all that. Everything's going to be gone. Goodbye. We're going to delete this. We're going to delete these two things. Actually, I wonder if I can just remove the Tesseract package and it will remove those. Uh, no, it did not. Oh, it did. Perfect. This is that old photo test that I don't care about. Um, this is the old thing. Okay. Okay. This is the perfect. Let's actually start a new, a brand new project for this. A new project because the Tetris data extractor is going to be my actual image. So we're going to say character. Uh, oh no, I have to. It's a .NET Core console app. This will be a character uh, digit re recognition. Recognition. I can type for sure. Okay. So that's fine. I'm going to create, uh, actually, I'm going to take the digits folder and bring it into this uh, project. We'll delete that. Don't show that. OK, so now we're going to work with the digit recognition project. And I have this 2.bmp. And Visual Studio is nice. It shows me what it looks like. Awesome. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I am going to. I said I was going to make it 45 by 40, but it clearly was 39. I don't want to add any extra data to it. Uh, this is a 45 by 39. So, okay, I have to uh, send this copy, copy to the output directory. Now I can start typing code. And the question is, how do you open a BMP file uh, for, for reading? <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. I have no idea. Who knows? Why would that be something I know how to do? I don't know how to do. So I'm actually just going to search it. That's what software developers do. So we're going to go C sharp, open BMP, uh, open bitmap from file. Look at this. 
uh, system image from file. Oh, that's a that's a YouTube video. No thanks. It looks like there's a bitmap class. And this is part of the .NET. Hmm. Look at this. I can actually store it. So it's just a new bitmap. I wonder. Okay. So I'm going to say var um, image equals new bitmap. install package drawing dot common excellent okay oh I have to uh, oh string file name perfect this will be in the digits slash two dot bmp let's just see I'm just going to put a breakpoint here just so we can see this actually load itself up. Hopefully we don't get uh, an exception. Oh, uh, was there an error? Here we go. I can hover over this and I can actually see, look at this. Uh, the height is 39. The horizontal resolution is 96. Oh no. So the height is 39. You can see that the width is 45. That's perfect. The size. Look at that. That's awesome. And now I can I should be able to loop through this. Uh, what is happening here? It doesn't like Tesseract. Well, of course it doesn't like Tesseract. OK, so that's how you open up the image, apparently. Perfect, and then a, whoops, not that. Then according here, we can get the pixel. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, let's see if we can't. Uh, let's just get the pixel at some random coordinate. So var pixel equals what did it say uh, image dot get pixel image dot get pixel and I can literally just ask for okay well let's get the top left pixel at zero zero and then we will write to the console um, what do we have here? So pixel, I have interesting to known color gets the known color value of this color structure. Uh, what if I did? that. Okay, so I will print what I think is the color to the console. I'm guessing this should this should print out black, the word black. Because I'm I need it to. Uh, it says zero. What is to known color? What is known color? That's really weird. Okay. Okay, uh, 
let's put a breakpoint here because I want to be able to recognize a black pixel and something else as long as it's not black. So here you can see that uh, blue, green, and red values are all zero. So that could just be our, our check. So I'm going to make a method. Oops, come on. Let's make a method that will return true or false. And it will be called is black. And this pixel is a color. So color, color. And we will return if the color red value equals one or equals zero and the color green value equals zero and the color blue value equals zero. Okay, this will just tell us if it's black. So um, is black the pixel? Okay, perfect. We don't need a breakpoint there. Okay, let's try this. So this should print out true because that top left pixel is black. And there it is. You see the true. Hopefully you can see that. It's right there. So that shit tells me it's true. Okay, now let's look at this bitmap. Let's take halfway through. So let's take uh, on the X coordinate Oh, we can even see here all the various. Let's take like 22 and the sixth pixel down should be white. It should be white. Let's say 22, 6. And this should print false. And if this works, then we're going to and it printed false. So I can really loop through these characters and determine the percentage of black pixels. So let's get the let's get the percentage of black pixels in this too. So we're going to make a we've got the image. Um, let's get a percentage of black equals get percentage come on of black for our image and visual studio is going to complain that it doesn't know what that method is but that's okay i can generate it okay and we are going to make this give us a, a decimal value so a number with decimals, because maybe, maybe we have to get more um, specific um, than just, you know, 40%. Maybe we need to know 40.37%. So, okay, so get percentage of black, and we're going to um, we're going to write percentage of black followed by a percent sign and we're going to end our program okay and this isn't going to run until we actually return a decimal value so there we go we're going to return zero this will return zero percent perfect now maybe I can Maybe I can make this bigger for make it easier to see. Um, if I go fonts and colors, I 
I want the console itself. Output window. Oh, you know what? I think I recall doing this before. I think I have to actually set it in the console. If I go here and say properties, I can bump up this font to like 20, maybe even 24. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see that now. There's the 0%. That's being returned, but that's just because we're hard returning 0%. Uh, we want to loop through everything. So let's make some for loops. For int x equals 0. Uh, x is less than the image width. OK, um, x plus plus. So this will loop through the numbers 0 to 45, yeah, or 0 to 44. And then we'll say for int y equals 0, y is less than image dot height. And we'll say y plus plus. OK, we're going to look at each pixel. Um, we're going to say int total pixels equals now I could do a multiplication but I could also add it up yeah let's not let's go image dot width times image dot height that'll be fine those are my total number of pixels and here are my black pixels they're gonna start off at zero and we're gonna say if is black image dot get pixel at x y uh, then we're gonna increase black pixels by one and we do that by doing plus plus okay so now we are going to return black pixels times 100 divided by total pixels And we should get, um, we're not going to get an integer. Uh, we're not going to get a decimal, I don't think. It might convert it to a decimal, but it won't do this math in decimal format. So let's just see what I mean here. Um, 53% black pixels for that number two. Uh, but because black pixels is an integer, total pixels is an integer, and 100 is an integer, it actually does arithmet uh, integer arithmetic on this, truncates any decimals, and then returns it as a decimal, so then it converts it to a decimal. Um, the decimal type, but it's lost its actual decimals. So let's see if we can't recover the decimals by making that a decimal. Because once the compiler sees that one of the numbers is a decimal, it will keep decimals for everything. So 53.675% black pixels for this number two. Hey, guys, I think this is going to work. I mean, we're going to be able to gather information now. Okay, I need other kinds of uh, numbers, though. So... Uh, let's open up the these thing here and let's look for a number one. So again, I want something 45 by 39, a bounding box that's 45 by 39. And I'm going to copy it, file, new, paste. There he is, he looks so great. Let's save this as a BMP. And the reason I'm using BMP is because I believe BMP stores the pixel data explicitly, which is why they tend to be larger file sizes. P 
PNGs and JPEGs, there's some compression that happens. And it's like JPEGs for sure. Um, I should do things while I talk here. Um, great for photos, but not so good for pixel um, investigations because it does some interpolation. So this is a one. Let's just go back to our program and see if we can't uh, see a different value. So 53 point something, what was it? 53.675% black for the two. Uh, okay. Let's go with one. And we need to copy this. Okay, let's see what the one is. I expect it to be a lot higher percentage than the two. And it's 70.99, so almost 80% black pixels for the one, which makes sense. A one is less, um, less white space. So right away from this, it tells me that if we were given a, a picture of a one or a two, I could very easily tell if it's a one or it's a two just by checking black pixels. And even if I, even if it was a little fuzzy and some of the black pixels got lost, like, you know, the difference between 50, what was the number, 53, and almost 80 is, is vastly different. I could just lean towards the closest one and I should be able, I should be good. Um, but as we add more digits, I think there's going to be uh, more and more, um, Some values might be very close together. And I'm expecting the six and the nine to be identical. So we're gonna have to do something uh, a bit different with that. And maybe next, I mean, I should have, I should have installed GIMP. That would have been a lot better. Okay, so we got our, our, our two and our one. Let's do our zero now. Uh, 45. Uh. Forty-five, thirty-nine. There he is, and it doesn't matter, you know, that if the zero is like almost touching to the left, or it's in the center of the box, or almost to the right. It's, it's just the percentage of black pixels, and that's not going to change. So let's save this as zero. Hey, this is great. I, I'm really hoping that we'll see something fantastic here. Um, if this weren't live, I could, I could uh, speed this up for you. But we are live, so I can't. But that's okay. Let's get this three. I want a forty-five by thirty. There we go. And the fact that each one of these seem to be indeed every digit is contained in the same size box, that's good. That's great. And it's actually not going to matter that this three is red. I could turn it into white. But because we are only focused on black pixels, black remains the same. Let's get a four out of here. Here's a four. So we got a 45 by... It's hard to do this with the mouse. Okay, there's my four. Save as four. Excellent. Uh, now I need five. There's a five. 
it's right there. I expect five to be among the most. I expect five to be among the least black, the most non-black. See, you thought we were going to be live programming. Nope, we're cutting, cutting images and saving them. Oh, see, this, this is saving it as a PNG. Nope, I don't want a PNG. I'm not sure what PNGs do to the the pixel values. But I don't want to take any chances. Okay, let's try and get a six. There's a six. Don't have to look far for a six. So 45. Oh, I think I'm... Five by the nine. Uh, don't save. I don't know what I did, but okay. That looks good. And I probably could have put this all in the same image, perhaps. But... Oh, come on. Man, my, my computer seems 